Let's look at the tail of the tape, what these, two, what these two guys have for us tonight. All right, so Irvin Amaya, 27 years younger, 30-year-old Nava. The official weight is 136.3 for Amaya, 135.8. Look at this, four-inch height advantage for Amaya, and he also holds a four-inch reach advantage over Nava. So eight and two for, Me for Mexico's Nuevo Leon taking on this impressive fighter. So here, here we go. Stepping over to Felipe de Maria. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the Bantamweight division. Señoras y señores, este combate es de tres asaltos de cinco minutos en la categoría de peso gallo de Lux Fight League. Presentando primero en la esquina blanca, un especialista en artes marciales mixtas, récord profesional de cinco ganadas, dos perdidas, una altura de un metro con 67 centímetros y un peso oficial de 135.8 libras. Presenting now on the white corner, he's an MMA fighter per record of five wins, two losses. He stands five feet, six inches tall, an official weight of 135.8 pounds. From Michoacán, Mexico, in fighting straight out of Puerto Vallarta, Jalisco, Mexico, is the savage Abraham Nava. Su oponente, al otro lado de la jaula, en la esquina negra, un especialista en artes marciales mixtas, récord profesional de ocho ganadas, dos perdidas, una altura de un metro con 78 centímetros y un peso oficial de 136 libras. Presenting now on the black corner, he's an MMA fighter, per record of eight wins, two losses. He stands five feet, ten inches tall, an official weight of 136 pounds. Fighting straight out of Monterrey, Mexico, he is... The Storm, Irving Amaya. The third inside the cage, la tercera sobre la jaula, Daniela Modab. Daniela, who's been a pioneer when it comes to female MMA. He's, we've seen her as a fighter, as a coach. In, a, in fighters' corners, as a referee now, she can do it all. Absolutely, man, and she's been doing a fantastic job. All righty, can't wait to get this show started. Welcome to UFC Fight Pass, and welcome inside the black and gold cage. Alongside UFC veteran Alex Soto, I am Francisco X Rivera, glad that you can join us. Amaya attacking quickly with a head kick. Yeah, now it's gotta be careful here, not to be standing on the outside here. Looks how Amaya holds that jab out. Keep him on distance, where he's going to use those that reach advantage, that four-inch reach advantage, mm. to try to get to him. Oh, oh, he ate a big punch right there. A savage tries to overwhelm his opponent. Amaya, however, oh, that's tight. is looking for the guillotine. He's in trouble. We can see the veins almost popping out. Look at Amaya. Oh man, it referee's is deep. very close. He might be tapping here. Look at his hands. He's relaxing. He's relaxing. Looks like he might be able to get the chin out. Nice. Wow. Good job he there. He got out. Amaya tries to close the grip again. Nice defense there from Nava. I mean, Nava's super tough, man. We saw that he's also very, very strong. I mean, we saw him get that knockout win in Tijuana at Luke's 25. So this is a really, really good opportunity here for Nava to shine even once again against Irvin Amaya. Yeah, very important. Psychologically speaking for Nava, being able to survive the first opportunity of danger here. Amaya, a very tall bantamweight. He measured 5'10". Very strong fighter as well. But, but here's Nava trying to go for the trip. Well, this is really good. See, Nava wants to do this, you know, make this fight close. You want to make this fight close and dirty, stay inside, not letting Amaya get, you know, being able to get that distance on him, you know, because he knows he's got incredible striking ability. And then we can see that Nava now has tasted a little bit of the, uh, that guillotine now seems much more comfortable being able to fend that off. And he's working in that inside leg trip, trying to get that takedown. So three minutes left here in round number one. 
kicking off our Lux 28 show here on UFC Fight Pass. I can't believe we've been here for 28 shows already in a span of five years. Wow, it's been five years. <laughs> Can you believe it? And Amaya was part of her second show. Now Amaya's got good back control now. Really good work there. Mm. Big knee right there to the rear end of Savage Nava. Amaya again. That second event that we had on Lux was hosted at the Gimnasio Juan de la Barrera, a historic venue that actually hosted the basketball competitions at the 1968 Olympics. Whoa, and talking nice. about Olympics, that was beautiful judo right there for Irvin Amaya. And look how fast he got the back. Now he's going to try to work for an arm bar, I think. Oh, no, he's coming in with that right underneath the neck there with the right hand. Yeah, Mata Leon coming up here. Nava in trouble again. It looks like it could just be a matter of time. Man, he's very tight. Slowly yep. making things really bad here for Nava. That's Nava's nice trying and tight. to survive. But Nava's doing a great job defending. Good. He pushes that arm up and over. He wants to put that arm over his head. Body triangle now applied by Irvin Amaya. The arm is down under the chin. Unable to close it so far. I gotta say, it's been a big improvement here for Amaya on the ground. Here, here he dominant. comes. Nice, get that arm underneath. Nice, those elbows. Now he's got that angle and that leverage to really generate some force for those, for those elbows. Yeah, Amaya, the kickboxing ex expert, trying to work on the ground with those long legs. And Nava surviving somehow. Could be a very long 30 seconds here for Nava. Yeah, and that elbow, I think, oh. cut him up. Big Oof. punches here. And blood all over the face of Abraham Nava. Even oh. splattering into Amaya's face. All right, so Abraham is going to survive here despite the complete domination from Irvin Amaya. Well, he's got to be careful here. He get a twister here. Oh, nice. All righty. What we usually see from Amaya, who's won three out of his last four inside the black and gold cage, complete domination. Yeah, big time. You know, and this is, this is going to play towards Nava's kind of, uh, you know, making it into this dirty fight on the ground and everything. This is what's going to loosen up Amaya here. Make, you know, put all the blood, go to his muscles, and he won't be as, he won't have that snap, right? Um, so it was a good intention there from Nava in this first round to try to really close the fight. Unfortunately, Amaya came in and has really dominated the, the, the entire ground game. And he seems to be breathing nice and easy, very comfortable into this first round. Being focused, taking in some instructions from his corner. Irvin looks like he's not even, uh, not even sweating. <laughs> yeah, so far so good for the tall, lanky bantamweight. Here we go, headed into the second round. Amaya working in the center of the cage, unleashing the first two punches of this second round. Oh, oh that's a big one. And that had knockout all over. Amaya, very capable kickboxer, trying to look for the liver kick. And that's what I'm talking about. You know, you want to keep, you want to make this fight as short as possible. You want to get inside of Amaya, make this fight really dirty. Stay on the outside, you're going to pay for it. It looks like Amaya just measuring his distance and waiting for the right opportunity. Look at Nava reacting well, Oof. but that's the answer from Irvin Amaya. It was all shin bone too. Right up on the forearms of Nava.
Amaya, eight and two overall. Three and two inside the locks cage. And he's won three out of four. Oh, wow. Amaya going for a takedown. This is interesting. Yeah. Clinching. Ooh. Good knee right to the midsection. And that really took a lot out of Nava. Yeah, that was like uh, just straight up the middle. Knee to the body. Manic. Here comes Amaya again. Now, this is very interesting. This is, this is change up some things here. So now it, it's going to change Nava's ability to really come in comfortably if he's got a comf uh, if he's always constantly worrying about Amaya going in for a, talk, a takedown. The last time we saw Abraham Nava, he had a very quick 53-second knockout win. Yeah. That huge. was Lux 25. But here, he hasn't really had an opportunity, a window. Yeah, but he always comes this in. Probably his best tough. position. Big slam right here. Although he fell into the guillotine. Let's see if Amaya is able to hold on to it. Yeah, Nava was able to slip right off. I think he feels more comfortable now. You know, we're in the second round, a little bit more sweat, a little bit more blood. It's, it's trickier. It's hard to get that guillotine in. When we talked to Abram before the fight, he said he likes ground and pound. Let's see if he's able to apply his strategy. I like that he's pushing his head up against the net. Uh, uh, not the net, but the fence there. It's perfect ability here to really drop some bombs from the top position here. Let's see if he's able to capitalize on this. Yeah. What's the feeling when you're in top position and you're able to unleash with ground and pound, Alex? I mean, you, there's so many things happening right now, right? You have to worry about submission attempts. You got to worry about, you know, getting uh, arm barred, you know, off the fence. Um, you want to stay close to your opponent. So you have, like, these split seconds to really unleash, you know, some good elbows or, or, or some punches in here. Um, so it's really a battle here. And both these guys are constantly trying to vie for a position. Oh. Wow, Amaya gives his back. Let's see, Nava is finally able to get into a position where he can start grounding and pounding. Interesting, interesting appro approach from Maya. If Nava somehow ends in the bottom, it could be tough for him. In the last minute of this second round. He's got to be careful here not to give his back, and he does. See if we can get another, another beautiful over the shoulder slam from Amaya. Amaya right. trying to get into position here. A good push there. You know, they're they're fighting for arm position here. There's there's the there's the underarm. Oh, he's looking for a guillotine choke here. Amaya was pretty stretched when he was reaching for it. That will at least contain Amaya in the last few seconds of this second round. Good sprawl right there by Abraham Nava. Yeah, Nava, Nava's doing a fantastic job right here. Being really heavy on that head. Nice. Tossing Here's over. Amaya. Looking for Ooh. the back. Oh. Gets Nava to the ground. Has no time, however. Pretty interesting turn of events here in round number two Absolutely. of her opening fight here on UFC Fight Pass. And look at Amaya now, briefly going for the mount. Things might be even now after round number two. Man, yeah, you're right. You know, uh, Nava came out. Actually, Amaya went for the takedown and, you know, was very successful in the opening seconds of the first round. I just thought that was really interesting to see that. And Nava, since had was able to really turn the corner a bit, not cause too much damage though. I don't, I don't. There wasn't a lot of threat uh, to submission attempts really. There was a back control for a second there, but uh, nothing really came really close. Um, I think Ruben Amaya was a little bit closer on that, but nonetheless, a very very tight round here. But you're right. I mean, it, it could be that Nava could have taken this round. Okay. It's now time for, for round number three. Fans here. 
Supporting Irvin Amaya from Monterrey. And it's time to get going for round number three. Irvin Amaya, Black Trunks, Abraham Nava, The Savage, White Trunks. Good pressure there from Nava. That's exactly what I need to do. You know what I love about close fights? Neither fighter can be overconfident in this third round. Wow, Amaya shooting for another takedown. Yeah. A drastic change for Irvin Amaya, who trains with RT Fighting Academy here in Monterrey. I'm wondering if there's like an injury to the leg or something from Amaya. I mean, because clearly, because when Amaya is fighting, on, you know, in the in the striking game, he's look at that, just solid. His accuracy is really well, well timed. Oh, oh, big head kick! He had a kryptonite all over it. Wow! Able to dodge danger right there. Nava trying to secure the neck. Man, Nava sprawling for everything he's got here. <laughs> ah, nice. Get the legs, sits right on it. Good move there from Amaya, taking things to the ground again. He's going for side control, but Nava's able to contain him somehow. Okay, now we got three and a half minutes left on the clock here. See if Irvin Amaya can do something. Maya trying Ooh. to disrupt the breathing of Abram Nava. That just makes things uncomfortable. Yeah, just some dirty <laughs> wrestling right there <laughs> from Irvin. Not much the effectiveness, but it just makes things weird for, for a few seconds. Yeah. Nava, by the way, just became a pro back in 2019. He went as an amateur for eight years. Wow. So yeah, big leap for him trying to become a contender in the bantamweight division. And what a he is, and he already has a highlight knockout, huh? Yeah. Irvin Amaya now looking for the highlight. He's gonna take the back here. Nava was able to escape. Amata Leon. Oh, here we submission go. Submission attempt. He's got he's the back. flat. I don't think he's underneath the neck. Ah, uh, it's hard to see from my angle here, but yeah, unable to secure the mata oh, leon here. Oh, he might have the neck there, Francisco. He might be under. A very uncomfortable position there for wow. Nava. His face <laughs> getting all red. He's gonna have to give up the position, and Amaya can work from the mount with two minutes to go here in the third and final round. It's nuts, man. Like it's like they're almost equal on the ground, and then, you know, Amaya goes for that takedown when he was doing just fantastic here, trying to finish the fight, which is really admirable. Going for the head and arm here. So Amaya getting Nava flat, getting him completely uncomfortable. Yeah, Nava needs to do is, is, is get underneath those legs, tr see if he can go back door. He's going for, for a neck choke here. Really, really tough to get. Yeah, especially when you're sitting with a low mount, trying to secure position. Look at Nava, he keeps on fighting, yeah. and then he escapes. A terrible position oh, for him. Oh, but he, he falls right into again. a Dars. Wow. Wow. All right, he's out again, but at least Amaya is showing what he can do. His repertoire of submissions. Yeah, he's he's really working on it. You can really tell that it, this is something that he focused on in his training camp. Definitely. I mean, not as spectacular as we've seen from him before, but definitely a more complete performance. Yeah, exactly. That's, what, that's exactly what I'm what I'm trying to say here is that you know, the performance here from Amaya is, you know, going from a pure striker to now starting to mix in the ground game and, oh, nice knee. Yeah, the wins are great, but I think the development 
in MMA. I mean, we've seen guys that take 10 plus years to get their first belt. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the first guy that comes to mind, Glover Teixeira, was fighting in WEC in the mid 2000s. Wow. And he took him like 10 plus years to win a belt in the UFC, right? I mean, development is the key, and I think we saw that from Irvina Maya. He must be happy with his performance, even though he looks all serious now. He's probably <laughs> trying to get it sink in, sinking in, but I think it was a, a decent, decent performance from Irvina Maya. Yeah, you know, I think uh, the ground game definitely was uh, was a, you know, a plot twist in today's uh, performance. Was not expecting him to go for those take downs. But look at that striking game. Boom, straight right hand down the pipe, push kick. High head kick, pop, connecting. Just he's got so much talent on the striking, you know, that I think that he's, you're right, developing, you know, and he's working on that development, working on his ground game. You can see that he did, the, in fact, work on that stuff. We've seen him fight before and come into a really tight matchups already where he was uh, dominated on the ground and really didn't have a lot of answers to it. But tonight he showed that he's, uh, he's improving on the ground and he's getting better every time. But let's see what the judges call this fight, right? Let's go up inside the cage with Felipe De Maria. Señoras y señores, después de tres asaltos, nos vamos a las tarjetas de los jueces. Ladies and gentlemen, we have gone the distance, and after three rounds, we go to the scorecards for a decision. All judges score the fight 30-27 to declare the winner by unanimous decision to the Storm, Irvin Hamaya. So as we said before, a more complete performance from Irvin Amaya. He now goes to nine and two. Four of those wins have come inside the Locks Fight League cages. Four and two here with us. Yeah, I, you know, I think it's safe to say, you know, this is, you know, a fighter who's under construction. And he's developing and he's started from, you know, that gruesome injury. And now he's moved on to, you know, really shown some really, some sparks of brilliance here. Beautiful toss there. And then right into the back. It was really quick to get that. Wasn't quite able to sink in that rear naked choke. Went for that guillotine a couple of times. And uh, Nava did a great performance here as well. Avoiding a lot of the uh, the striking game, getting getting caught in that, and really trying to close the, the fight. So I think um, Irvin Amaya has moved on to, you know, the next part of his development as a fighter. Yeah, and I think we can, I mean, we're going to mention it, but if we can sort of close the chapter on this guy recovering from a freak injury mm -hmm. to someone who's now a reality. Uh, agreed, agreed. No, no, absolutely. And he did that the second he stepped back into the cage. 